there, interwebs. I hope you're all doing well. So I am here to review uh, another episode of what has become my favorite, absolute favorite Star Trek series, Star Trek Very Short Treks, this episode titled Worst Contact. Now, let me start off with the positives because I've been focusing a lot on the negatives of this series as I've been doing a review. So let's talk positives here. We had Jonathan Frakes back as Riker, who, by the way, at this point, I'm just sort of assuming that Jonathan Frakes, if you mention the word Star Trek around him, that man will pop up and he will ask to be in it because he has been in every single modern Star Trek show, either behind the scenes or in front of the camera at this point. Uh, besides maybe Prodigy, I think is the only one. So get that man in Prodigy season two. But even more excitingly, we got Gates McFadden back as Dr. Crusher, uh, and while we did just see her in Picard season three, it was really nice to see her back in that TNG uniform, and both of them are fantastic in this uh, episode. I, I had a lot of fun with their delivery. The, uh, you know, Jonathan Frakes is clearly having fun with his comedic chops, because we all know that man is really, 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 really funny. Oh, no, 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 no. That being said, this episode continues the problems that I've had with Very Short Treks uh, in that, one, I don't find the jokes to be very funny. They feel very like on the nose, very expected type of humor, as well as I don't really think that the area that this humor is directed feels very Star Trek. Now, before I get into it, I do wish to say this. I have seen some uh, comments on my last two reviews, uh, people saying uh, two different things. One, Jesse, don't be a gatekeeper. Just because this isn't, you know, the Star Trek that you like, you shouldn't be saying that this isn't Star Trek. And I want to be very clear. If you like very short treks, if you think it is the only Star Trek that you've seen, or you've seen every episode of Star Trek, but you think this is amazing, this is great, this is good, any level of enjoyment of the series, I think that's fantastic. You are just as much a Star Trek fan as me, as someone who does not like, you know, very short treks. I am not gatekeeping anybody. I am just saying, to me, this does not feel like the humor that Star Trek should be aiming for, because it doesn't really fit what I think Star Trek should be doing. So I want to be clear on that. And then number two, the other thing that people are saying is like, Jesse, well, if you don't like them, don't watch them. And I will say, like, that is absolutely fair. I think for people who, you know, aren't doing my job, uh, I think if you don't like them, don't watch them. That That's totally great. In fact, that probably shows CBS or whatever that people don't really like these things in the first place. But for me, I like to review all the things of the show that I like because I love Star Trek and I like to be up on the conversation. I like to critique it. I like to, you know, uh, share my thoughts about the thing that I love, all the good and the bad. And I say it out of love, not out of hatred. So this doesn't mean saying like, oh, Star Trek has gotten terrible, modern Star Trek sucks. It's just me saying, I love this thing. I love every aspect of it and I want to critique the things that I dislike just as much as I want to praise the things that I love. So let's get into it now that I've gotten those caveats out of the way. This short just does the same thing that I had a problem with with the very first episode of Very Short Treks in that the humor is coming out of a place that seems to be just antithetical to what I really think Star Trek should be about. This whole short is predicated on this belief that these people that Riker and uh, um, Crusher are going to meet and do first contact with are just so gross that we don't ever want to have first contact with them again. Like Riker blows up their, uh, you know, their warp core design and all this jazz so this thing can get away with it. Oh, no! I want drive ruined. And I just thought that that just felt very shallow. Like that's just like, oh look, they're gross people. And it's just like Star Trek as a franchise to me has always been about like accepting differences, accepting the differences of others, loving others, loving the differences of life forms. That's what Gene Roddenberry always talked about. It's about this joy in the future where, you know, we accept the difference of everybody that's very different from today. And so this humor coming out of like, ooh, these people are gross and disgusting and I don't get their culture just feels very weird to me. And yes, I get that the humor is like, they are really gross, but compared to human standards, like they have snot on themselves and things like that. But if it's framed in the jokes as like, a cultural thing that they do. At least let us give you our customary goodbye of licking your eyeballs. And it's something that, like, I feel like Riker and uh, Crusher would have, like, worked through uh, and actually talked about. I mean, like, one of the more interesting uh, discussions in Deep Space Nine was, like, Prejudice Against the Ferengi by um, by Avery Brooks's character, Cisco. I think that's a wonderful way of that show having talked about, like, you know, we find things that the Ferengi do deplorable and, and awful um, but in the Federation, but there are people within that culture that are different. There's different aspects of that culture that are different. And, yes, there's an element of, like, we should declare, we can't just be like, oh, we can't ever judge them. It's like, no, we can judge the Ferengi for being fairly awful in terms of their capital names, the ways they treat women, all that stuff. It's worth judging them. But it is also about talking with them on their terms as well as coming to understand them 
holy. And and then coming to an understanding of like how to judge like their society and where's there's there's ethics being broken and things like that. Whereas here, this just comes out of like, these people are weird and gross and strange and I don't really like them. And I'm, I know this is a very short trick because it's meant to be comedy. It's like, I feel like there could have been comedy and Riker being like, yeah, I do kind of want to like touch these snot people. And then Crusher being like, well, you know, that's not very hygienic. Maybe you should think of hygiene and Riker being like, oh, I'm used to being all sorts around all sorts of fluids. It's fine. Like, like some sort of like playing on the dynamic of like, you know, people in the future are like, yeah, yeah, let's go for this but we need to like be thinking about safety like like there's just like there's things that you could have done with this human that would have felt like more unique to star trek because again this joke felt like you'd have had it in snl it didn't need to be a star trek thing and i feel like there's better humor to be mined with this concept in a star trek setting that felt more in line with a star trek ethos as well and then i again this is just kind of like the other thing that i think is worth mentioning here like this type of humor kind of plays into that idea of like oh foreign people are dirty and again i don't think this is the intention of the writers i'm not calling them racist or whatever but it's just like is that the type of humor we're really going to play into right now like in this current era right now where we see a lot of like xenophobia going on here on earth that we're going to play into this like concept of like oh those those people from a different culture are really gross and dirty and their culture is just very strange and disgusting and non-hygienic and that's a way we can dehumanize them like that's that's what we see a lot of rhetoric today being done as like framing people as dirty and that's a way that we can dehumanize them and, and treat them as not full people and again you know this short isn't saying that but it plays into that line of thinking and i just really disliked it so yeah i, I think on every level besides the fact that it was nice to see jonathan frakes and you know um and gates mcfadden back sadly this one uh honestly was the worst of them all for me and not just because of the gross out humor i don't mind gross out humor i actually kind of like gross out humor sometimes but just the the where this humor was directed felt like the grossest thing of all in this short